Hello friends, in this video, we are going to see what exactly happens when transformer is loaded and by that analysis, we will develop equivalent circuit diagram of a transformer when it is loaded. So I will draw a simple structure of a transformer. So this is the core of a transformer. And on the limbs of the core, we are having windings. So there are N1 and N2 number of turns of these windings. If I am giving supply to the winding, that is called as a primary winding. So this is a primary winding and now transformer is loaded. So obviously there will be a load on secondary winding. Now. This is a voltage applied which we call as a primary voltage because of that we will have primary current I1 that primary current I1 will flowing through these windings windings having n1 number of turns so by the virtue of right hand thumb rule if current is represented by curved fingers thumb outstretch will determine direction of magnetic flux so if this is the direction of current I will get magnetic flux in this direction So the direction of flux is upward and it will complete this path like this. So this is flux phi. This flux phi will give rise to EMF at primary side represented as E1. Now same flux phi is linked with N2 number of turns and it will give rise to secondary side induced EMF E2 so E2 got induced and now I am closing the secondary side winding through load ZL which will give rise to secondary current I2 which in turn flows through this ZL and finally we will get terminal voltage V2 now comes the trick here I2 is flowing through this winding in this direction if curl fingers represent direction of current thumb outstretch will determine the direction of magnetic flux now here inside core one more flux produced because of this I2 and the direction of flux like this it is opposite to that of main flux so the direction is upward that means it is opposite to the main flux I will represent this flux as phi2 because that is produced by this I2. Now what is the problem? Inside core there will be reduction of flux and the flux which is equivalent 
in the core is 5 minus 5 2 so what is happening inside core main flux reduce and because of that we cannot say emf equation directly proportional to flux phi which we assume as a constant so what we need to do we need to make sure that in the core there will be only phi there won't be an effect of this i2 how to take care of it it will be taken care by this i1 what i1 will do i1 will give or pull out some extra current from supply in order to nullify the effect of phi2 so there will be one more flux inside a core and the direction of flux will be opposite to that of phi2 and equal to phi2 so it will be like this I repeat it is opposite to phi2 and equal to phi2 if I consider n1 and n2 same but otherwise the effect of this flux or you can say the job of this flux is to nullify the effect of phi2 so what will happen now inside core we can say three fluxes are there but the resultant is only one flux and that is this which we call as main flux so that's what happening when you load the transformer now all this concept we have to put on a paper as far as equivalent circuit diagram is concerned so let's see how the equivalent circuit diagram will look like we are going to draw equivalent circuit diagram of single phase transformer when it is loaded so let's draw equivalent circuit diagram i am in the primary side of the transformer primary resistance primary leakage reactance then i have core loss resistance magnetizing reactance this is a primary side of a transformer primary side is excited by the voltage which is AC secondary side I have secondary winding resistance and secondary leakage reactance and I am loading a transformer so load impedance so it is a V1 R1 X1 current is I1 this is RC XM current is I0 current flowing through the RC is IC and through XM is I mu this current is I2 dash because of N1 number of turns we will get EMF induced E1 same flux is linked with N2 number of turns give rise to secondary induced EMF E2 R2 is a secondary winding resistance X2 secondary leakage reactance secondary current is I2 ZL is the load impedance and voltage across ZL is V2 terminal or you can say secondary voltage of a transformer let's list out all this once again V1 it is a primary or you can say supply voltage 
आई वन प्राइमरीकरण आर वन प्राइमरी वाइंडिंग रेजिस्टेंस और यू कैन से प्राइमरी रेजिस्टेंस एक्स वन प्राइमरी लीकेज रिएक्टेंस और यू कैन से जस्ट प्राइमरी रिएक्टेंस आई जीरो इट इज नो लोड प्राइमरी करण विच हैज टू कंपोनेंट्स वन इज आई सी फ्लोइंग थ्रू दिस आर सी एंड कॉल एस कोर लॉस कंपोनेंट ऑफ नो लोड प्राइमरी करंट आई जीरो आई म्यू इट्स अ मैग्नेटाइजिंग कंपोनेंट of no load primary current i0 and i2 dash is the component of i1 to nullify effect of phi2 that is the flux produced by i2 secondary current <coughs> then we have rc core loss resistance xm magnetizing reactants n1 primary turns e1 primary induced emf this is what we have at the primary side secondary side n2 secondary turns n2 secondary turns e2 secondary induced emf r2 secondary resistance x2 secondary leakage reactants i2 is secondary current and finally v2 secondary or terminal voltage so all this effect when transformer is loaded is taken care by this equivalent circuit diagram which have so many parameters so my advice is that whenever you have to draw and remember all this go from v1 to v2 v1 should be first quantity in your list and v2 should be last quantity because whenever we are going to draw a phasor diagram there will be a logical order for different different phasors all depends upon this list and some kvl and kcl equations thank you